Hello, and welcome to Donaldson Company's Clean Solutions Webinar, Strategies for Effective Diesel Fuel Management in Winter. I'm Jim Peterson with Donaldson, and this is the ninth in our series of webinars at MyCleanDiesel.com. You can't filter diesel in winter. I've heard this statement, or a variation on it, many times in my career. And there is truth to it. It is very difficult to get fuel as clean as it needs to be for a modern diesel engine as the temperature drops. Fuel standards have changed. We've taken the sulfur out of diesel, we've put many more additives in diesel, we've added bio to diesel, and at the same time, our engines have gotten more sophisticated. They need cleaner and cleaner fuel, which has driven the need for more efficient filtration. As these two have come together, these changes in the fuel and changes in filtration technology, it definitely has become more of a challenge to get the fuel as clean as it needs to be in wintertime. We're going to describe a variety of strategies today to make sure that no matter how cold the weather gets, you keep running. I'd like to start by discussing some of the challenges that we see for fuel in wintertime. The first one is simply engine cleanliness requirements. These sophisticated engines must have clean fuel, even in the wintertime. And sometimes there's a temptation to ratchet back the effectiveness of the filters, the efficiency of our filters. But we really need to make sure that we're always delivering the cleanest possible fuel into our engines. The cloud point. There's a point which all diesel fuels will, will start to gel up, and that's the cloud point of that fuel, that temperature at which gelling begins. Water. Water's always a challenge for diesel fuel. It's can always be an issue if we have too much water in our fuel. But winter really exacerbates those problems. Water is just a catalyst for so many different things, and a lot of them are not good when it comes to our engines or filtering our diesel fuel. Finally, bio blends. Bio has brought a lot of good things to our fuel, but it's also created some challenges, especially with winter, that make it difficult to filter and get the performance we need. I'd like to start by reviewing a little bit about how we got to where we are in relation to filter technology. The blue line on this chart shows the general efficiency of a, a, a 25, 30 micron filter, what we often find on today's bulk storage tanks. The green line indicates the efficiency of kind of your traditional fuel filter. Very good at stopping particles 7 microns and larger. Particles smaller than that, we were pretty comfortable letting those get through the filter and then through the combustion process. With the advent of the high pressure common rail injectors and the high pressures that come with them, we need filters that are much more efficient, capturing essentially everything 2 and 3 microns and bigger. We want to be 99.9, 99.99% efficient at these levels. So that's where the challenge comes in. We know fuel is going to gel up in wintertime. We know these problems can happen, but our filters keep getting more and more efficient, and there's no reason to think that that trend won't continue into the future. The first strategy I'd like to talk about is know your fuel. It's so important to know what it is you're putting into your tank. Different fuels react to cold weather in different ways. I'd like to talk specifically about a couple of topics. The first one being cloud point. The second one being biofuel. Cloud point again is that temperature at which fuel begins to gel, at which point becomes solid, turning into paraffinic wax. Now different fuels have different cloud points. B100, for example, a straight biodiesel, could have a cloud point at, at 40 degrees F or higher. Straight number two diesel will have a significantly lower cloud point than that, and number one diesel will have a lower cloud point still. Number two diesel is a long chain hydrocarbon consisting of a chain 11 to 20 carbons in length. Number one diesel is a shorter hydrocarbon chain. And this is be important because longer chain hydrocarbons turn into solids at a higher ambient temperature. The cloud point, again, is when the longest chains in, in the fuel reach saturation and start to form solids of paraffinic wax. And you can see that in this picture here. You can literally see the sheets of gelling that are occurring, and they're 100 to 200 microns in size, and they're actually visible with the human eye. This slide here is a good picture of what happens to diesel when it gets cold. The vial on the left is number one off-road diesel the vial in the middle, uh, number two off-road diesel, and the vial on the right, number two on-road diesel. And this picture was taken outside in Minnesota when it was six degrees Fahrenheit. The vials were left outside overnight and the temperature dropped 17 degrees to negative nine. And you can literally see the gelling that's occurring in the vials of number two diesel. The number one 
still has not reached its cloud point yet, so it's clear. It would be easy to filter this fuel. But the number two uh, uh, diesels have reached their cloud point, and they've gelled up, and you can see the cloudiness inside. You can see the gelling that's occurring. And of course, these would plug up any filter that they come across. So this shows that number one diesel has a lower cloud point than number two. And it's important to remember that the only way to lower the cloud point of diesel is to blend it with number one. That's the best way to bring that cloud point down. Blend number one diesel with number two diesel. I want to talk a little bit about biodiesel. You know, bio brings a lot of important characteristics to fuel, uh, but it does present some challenges. You know, first and foremost, it does lower emissions. It also prides, provides lubricity. When we took the sulfur out of diesel fuel, some of the lubricity that was there went with it. And so we needed a substance that would bring that lubricity back, and biodiesel does a great job. It also improves cetane which improves combustion, and it has good water solubility. In fact, it holds more water than number two diesel. On the other hand, bio has a lower heat content, which means less energy. There's stability concerns. According to biodiesel.org, biodiesel is, quote, less toxic than table salt and biodegrades as fast as sugar. That means we just can't hold on to it as long as we could regular number two diesel. Additionally, there's some reduced water separation with bio. It just doesn't coalesce out of uh, water doesn't coalesce out of biodiesel as readily as it does out of straight number two and glycerin dropout can be a concern as well it's important to know what bio blend you're using it's rare in the united states that someone would have hundred percent bio or b100 their blend more typically would be b5 or b10 b20 that number indicating the percentage of bio mixed in with the number two diesel it's also important to remember that due to its lubricity characteristics Bio is often used in the United States and Canada as a lubricity additive. In fact, you might have up to a B5 fuel and not even be aware of it. So we talked about how important it is to know your fuel. The second important strategy is the proper use of additives. Additives in fuel are vital and they serve many purposes. Corrosion inhibitors, lubricity improvers, cold flow improvers. We have to have these additives in there for our fuels to work properly. Unfortunately, in winter, some of these additives can have uh, some challenging effects as well. And I want to talk specifically about cold flow improver. Cold flow improver is an important tool in winter. There's a lot of varieties out there and many of them work very, very well. But it's important to remember what cold flow improver does not do. Cold flow improver does not lower a fuel's cloud point. Additionally, cold flow improver does not eliminate gelling. Cold flow improver's job is actually to minimize that gelling, to keep the size of the gelling smaller so the fuel is easier to filter. A key component of cold flow improver is ethylene vinyl acetate, EVA. Its function is to modify wax crystallization, or the gelling, at the fuel's cloud point temperature. The EVA is present in the fuel at a concentration where it becomes oversaturated just above the fuel's natural cloud point. It forms small EVA crystals that act as sites for paraffinic wax crystal growth. The fuel wax crystals grow as needle-like structures around the central EVA crystal. EVA also coats the outside of the crystal, limiting growth. This produces a dendritic crystal structure, kind of like a spiny sea urchin, and you can see those in the red circles in the picture. And they're limited in size, typically in range of 10 to 20 microns. Some higher end cold flow improvers will include an ingredient called wax anti-settling agents, or WASAs. And WASAs are a series of amine compounds that are added to coat the wax crystal structure with a charged molecule, preventing agglomeration and settling. They further limit the size of the uh, crystals between 1 and 5 microns. So again, it's important to remember cold flow improver is not going to eliminate that gelling and it's not going to lower the fuel's cloud point, but what it does do is it does make sure that those crystals are as small as possible and that the, fil the fuel is as filterable as possible. That brings us to our next strategy. We want to filter the fuel when it's as warm as possible. Now I understand it's winter time, it's going to be cold, but the warmer temperature we can filter that fuel at, the easier it's going to be to filter and the easier it is for us to make sure that we get the fuel where it needs to be. Let's take another look at this slide which we looked at previously and it details the evolution of filtration efficiency. As we mentioned, with newer engines, the more sophisticated engines, the need for cleaner fuel is paramount. And so we're capturing as much as we can. 
Now if we have a gelling incident, we're going to plug up pretty much any filter we come across. The real challenge comes when even when we're using a really good cold flow improver that's limiting the size of crystal growth between 1 and 5 microns, we can still plug up those high efficiency filters even at the bulk storage tank or on the equipment. So even when that cold flow improver works perfectly, sometimes challenges still exist. Therefore, we want to filter that fuel when it's as warm as possible. Now a lot of times that might be on the vehicle itself once the engine's had a time to turn it over a few times. The other great place to filter fuel is actually upon receipt when it's being delivered into the bulk storage tank. At the end of that tank, that's generally where the fuel is going to be warmest before it sits out overnight or over a long period of time and gelling can occur. So it's an effective place to filter. Filter that fuel at the inlet to the bulk storage tank. The next strategy I'd like to discuss is keep it dry. So many problems are caused by water. And winter just makes a lot of those problems worse. You take a look at this cap here, and you can see the ice building up on the underside of it. Now this cap was from a tank of 500 gallon tank of diesel fuel that's two thirds full. And you can see that as soon as the temperature starts to warm up, that ice is going to melt and we'll have more water in our fuel. A lot of this water just comes from condensation. Think about what happens to your car in the winter time. It's cold outside, you get in the car, you turn on your heater, and as that heat warms up, frost begins to accumulate on the windows. The same thing can happen on the inside of our tanks. That temperature difference between the air and the fuel allows a, a lot of condensation to take place. And that free water can freeze, and it can freeze and plug up filters or plug up pipes. We want to do everything we can to keep that free water out of our fuel. The addition of bio into our diesel fuel can create some additional challenges in wintertime. Bio has a higher cloud point than straight number two diesel. So as the bio blend in my fuel increases, as I have a higher percentage of bio in my fuel, my cloud point will go up as well. Additionally, bio holds more water in it than number two diesel. And as that bio gets colder, it wants to give up that water. More free water enters our fuel. And with more free water, we get more solids. The picture here shows a pic is a, a vial of B10, a 10% bio blend, at room temperature with 200 to 300 ppm of water. And you can already see solids are starting to form. So where does this water come from? Well, the good news is that in the US and Canada, our fuel suppliers do a great job of bringing fuel very dry. It's rare to find a lot of free water in the fuel that's delivered in the U.S. and Canada. So where does the water come from? Well, a lot of it comes from condensation. Again, that temperature difference between the air and the fuel. And the more headspace we have in our tanks, the more opportunity, that, opportunity there is for condensation. Certainly seepage in an underground tank or, or atmospheric air coming in through a breather, that can add to the moisture as well. But it's really that condensation, whether on vehicle or in the bulk storage tank, that creates a lot of this moisture. So we want to keep our tank as full as possible. Tanks should be sized properly so the fuel doesn't sit around in a half empty state or a two thirds empty state because the emptier the tank is, the more head space there is, the more wall space there is for condensation to form. And the same is true on equipment. If you think about driving a piece of equipment around all day and the fuel and the tank are hot at the end of the day, and then as that tank cools, as the air cools, condensation is can form. If you fill up that piece of equipment when you're done using it, you'll have less chance for water to get into your fuel. In addition to the ice, water can lead to some other problems. Water is a catalyst for some, some different types of changes. For example, with bio, water competes with the glycerin, and the glycerin can tend to drop out and plug up everything it comes across. For example, this filter here. Excessive water can also lead to issues with additives that can create solids. For example, corrosion inhibitor and sodium, when mixed with water, can create metal carboxylates. And we've from time to time seen issues with excessive water and cold flow improver creating solids as well. So the key to water management is to keep the water out. The best way to do that is to have water absorbing filters at the inlet and the outlet of your tank. If there does happen to be free water, we want to capture that water and get it out of the fuel. Additionally, we want to make sure that we have a good breather filter at the top of our tank, keeping out ambient dust and moisture. As that tank breathes in, we want to capture any of that moisture going in before it gets to the fuel. Finally, Donaldson has a new product called RAD, Reservoir Air Dryer. And this product will take clean, cool, dry air and blow it over the headspace of the tank, 
purging that air and making sure that that headspace is as dry as it can be, taking that condensation out, keeping that headspace dry, really eliminating the opportunity for condensation and moisture to form in the first place. The next strategy is pick your battles. There's a lot of choices that we can make, things like levels of filtration efficiency, where to put filtration, using different bio blends, or blending number one diesel with our number two diesel to lower the fuel's cloud point. The point is, we want to have these discussions and put these plans in place well before winter comes. We know it's going to get cold. We know that there's a higher chance for fuel problems in winter. So let's plan out ahead of time how we're going to attack those problems and make sure we keep running. One example I want to share is simply, where do you want to deal with any fuel issues that might arise? Do you want to deal with them at the bulk storage tank? Or is it better to let those problems get distributed out into your equipment? And the answer might seem obvious at first, but for different customers, there can be different results. For example, a customer that has the snow plowing contracts in their county, they have to make sure that no matter what happens, those trucks are going through. So they'll fight those fuel problems all day long at the bulk storage tank. On the other hand, we have a school bus customer that the worst thing that can happen is to have a whole bunch of buses, 130 buses in their case, lined up trying to get fuel on a cold morning. They'd rather have those buses take their chances, and if one or two of them have a problem, they'll have buses, uh, replacement buses ready to go. But it's better for them to get those buses out picking up kids than to run a chance that they're going to have a big line at the fuel dispensing point. So it's important to have that, that conversation with your customer. When that inevitable fuel problem arises, where would you like to deal with it? The final strategy, let Donaldson help. We have a lot of experts when it comes to diesel fuel and diesel fuel filtration. We understand additives, we understand bio blends, we understand the differences between number one and number two, and we can be a real asset in figuring out how to make sure that cold weather doesn't stop you from getting done what you need to get done. One great tool is a clean fuel audit. This free service involves us coming on site, sampling your fuel, walking through your infrastructure, and creating a set of recommendations to help make sure that cold that weather doesn't stop you cold. So please bring us out and let's talk about how we can keep you running no matter what cold weather brings. Finally, I'd like to invite you to check us out at mycleandiesel.com and connect with us there. It's a great online resource for all things diesel, focusing on three key topics. What is clean diesel? Why do I need clean diesel? How do I get clean diesel? Please connect with us there and join this webinar January 19th and 20th. We'll be sending out invitations soon and we look forward to talking with you then. Thank you and have a wonderful day.